In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We will discuss a sample from the Book of Lamentations, which has deep prayers by the prophet Jeremiah. This is the part that we hear on Good Friday and Sad Melodies. I think some people do not understand it. We'll take a small part. However, all the prayers in the Bible are schools of prayer. The Psalms are a school of prayer, but not only the Psalms. Jeremiah prayed, Nehemiah prayed, Daniel prayed, Isaiah prayed. All of them are a school of prayer because when they pray, you learn from them and learn how to pray in spirit and how rich praying in the spirit is. The book of Jeremiah was written approximately in the 6th century BC. Jeremiah witnessed the Babylonian captivity. Pro the prophet Isaiah came before the captivity and said that it will come and that there will be hard days coming. The prophet Jeremiah attended the captivity. But Jeremiah was old when it happened. He kept telling them to repent, but they did not. He told them to surrender to Babylon, to prevent deaths. So they considered him a traitor and imprisoned him. When the Babylonians heard that this man told people to surrender, they treated him well. They said to him, Come with us to Babylon, and we will honor you. He said, No, let me live with the poor people that you will leave in the destroyed Jerusalem. He, as a priest, lived, loved the temple and Jerusalem so much, so they left him with the destruction of the temple, and there the book of Lamentations was written. Lamentations means weeping. The pride of the Jews was the temple. Jeremiah saw it burn. The temple was not torn down. It was burned and damaged. It was not torn down till after Christ. Jesus Christ, glory be to him, came to the same temple and preached. It was renewed. Lamentations is weeping and crying over the destruction of Jerusalem in, in general, and especially the temple that got burned during the captivity. And of course, Lamentations included the idea that the Jews were the reason for the captivity. So Lamentations includes repentance. Jeremiah offered repentance for the sins of his people, it is a sad book, so the church took this third chapter and made it a sad hymn to be sung during the ceremony of the bur burial of Jesus Christ at the twelfth hour on Good Friday, as though all these feelings in pure sadness are associated with the burial of Christ. Let me tell you the part that we will study. We will study only ten verses, but the Good Friday version is longer. Starting from verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope, that through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent, because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him, and be full of reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. Verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The word recall is a way to prayer. Prayer, as we learn from the saints, is not many consecutive phrases one after the other. Prayer can be one phrase repeated in the heart. This is the way our Lord Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. There was one repeated message. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. He went back and forth and said it again and again. For the men of prayer, it is not best to say many things in the prayer. It can be one meaningful prayer, and they recall it in their hearts for hours. It beats inside with their heart as their heart beats, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, or glory to you, Lord, or lead us not into this temptation, or help me, God, etc., or whatever they say. So I recall to my mind had two points, the insistence or repetition and to my mind. As a translator's note, in the Arabic translation of the Bible, verse 21 says, I recall to my heart. It means that it is not just a word from the mouth. We will have another topic called silent prayers. 
A prayer can be silent, but God hears it because it is from the heart. No one hears it, but God does hear it. Also, the heart is the inner room or the holy temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, You are the temple of God. The Holy Fathers say, Go inside your heart and lock yourself in. What do they mean by go inside your heart? They mean separate yourself from everything in the universe. You might be standing during the divine liturgy and notice someone moving, someone else talking, someone wearing something, or someone opening a newspaper in the church. Why do you bother with that? Pray. Do not look or listen. Go inside your heart and concentrate. Will you waste this blessed hour? What will you gain from watching the wrongs of other people? Go inside your heart. Or as the saints said, silence your tongue and your heart will speak. Silence your heart and God will speak. So the idea of I recall to my mind is that you start with a prayer from the mouth and then you try to pray from the heart, from inside, not from outside. The most beautiful recalling is the Jesus prayer. The most used prayer in church is the name of Jesus. My Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Or, my Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. This I recall to my mind. Also means that he is in pain and he prays that it ends. What is the reason for the pain? What hurts you, Jeremiah? This brings us to the beginning of the chapter. The chapter begins with, I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. That's verse 1. Every word can be applied to Jeremiah and also to Jesus as a prophecy. Jeremiah said it as his true feeling, but it applies to Jesus more accurately as a prophecy, 600 years before it happened. This is the concept of prophecies. Whoever said the prophecy felt it as his own feelings, but the Holy Spirit made him, made him say it to apply to Jesus' feelings, as Jesus will not be able to talk at that moment. When he was crucified, we could hear his inner words uttered through Jeremiah by the Holy Spirit hundreds of years ago. We hear what is inside Jesus' heart without talking. This is the greatest, the greatness of the prophecies. I am the man who has seen affliction. Jeremiah indeed had seen affliction. When he witnessed the glory of his country decaying and the temple being destroyed, this was very sad. And there is no one like Christ glory be to him, who saw affliction by the rod of his wrath, that is, by God's anger. In both cases, God's anger was on the Jews by the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. God's anger was on all human beings' sins, which he put on Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? Because he made him who knew sin to be sin for us. 1 Corinthians 5.21 He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. That's verse 2. It means that he made it so dark. He ushered me into a very dark place with no light at all. This is his feeling which was born from extreme sorrow. Verse 3. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. This means the whole day he does not give a break all day long. You know that from the beginning of Jesus' trial, he didn't have a chance to even catch his breath. Five trials all night long, including scourging, humiliation, the crown of thorns, then carrying the heavy cross, then the nails, the whole day. And this was also Jeremiah's emotional state, feeling that God's anger was on them time and time again throughout the day. He was aged my he has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones that's verse 4 this does not apply to jeremiah as much as it does to jesus jeremiah for example did not get scourged but jesus did this is like david when he said they pierced my hands and my feet in psalm 22:16 this did not happen literally with david but these were his emotions he felt like being broken and pierced due to persecution this phrase is fulfilled literally by Jesus Christ. He has aged my flesh and my skin. Jesus' flesh was brutally lacerated as a result of the flogging. If you studied the scientific aspect of Jesus' crucifixion, you will find that it was extremely painful. 
this did not happen literally when it says, and broke, broken my bones in verse 4. But his bones were sore from the excessive beating and the crucifixion. In verse 5, he has besieged me. It is like putting him in a corner and stepping on him. But it has a spiritual meaning in that Christ is the cornerstone of the church and it is built upon his shoulders. Also in verse 5, they say it says, And surrounded me with bitterness and woe. Woe is anguish and distress, both physical and emotional. Continuing verse 6, He has set me in, a dark, in dark places like the dead of long ago. This was Jeremiah's feeling. However, the Holy Spirit has spoken of what Jesus would feel. Jesus entered the grave. The grave is dark, but Christ has enlightened it. Verse 7, He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out, meaning I am trapped. I cannot escape. Jeremiah was saying that God has decided to put him through this agony and torment. Also in verse 7, he has made my chain heavy. Jeremiah was imprisoned and in chains many times, and also our Lord was imprisoned. It is also a metaphor for feeling heavy emotionally. Verse 8, even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. You know that Jesus' prayers in Gethsemane were not answered at all. When he prayed, saying, Take this cup away from me, it was not taken away. And when he prayed, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The sky went dark. There was no answer. So the pain increased because his prayers were not answered in spite of his pain. This was one of the many sorrows that Christ chose for himself. Jeremiah felt the same way. He prayed a lot for God to save his people, but this was not answered. Instead, God ruled them with anger. Verse 9. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. It means that God designed a path for me to enter this exact place. Verse 10. He has been to me a bear lying in wait, like a lion in ambush. It's as if he is hunting me. Verse 11 and 12. He has turned aside my ways and torn me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set me up as a target for the arrow. You know when they hang something and aim for it? This was Jeremiah's feeling as a result of his great bitterness. And of course, this was fulfilled by Christ. Romans and Jews conspired against him to get rid of him. Verse 13. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. Loins in the scriptures and Psalms was used to describe every internal pain or feeling. It was used to describe the whole abdomen. And there was an internal bleeding and extreme pain as a result of the prolonged muscle tension on the cross. Verse 14. I have become the ridicule of all people. They, the, their taunting song all the day. This happened to Jeremiah and happened more clearly to Jesus when they mocked him under the cross, saying, Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. Let him come down now from the cross if he is the Messiah. <clears throat> Verse 15. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drink wormwood. Wormwood is a very bitter plant. Verse 16. He has broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. <clears throat> when Christ fell under the cross and sand and gravel filled his mouth, and Jeremiah experienced this feeling, he was once thrown into a well full of mud, and he sank down into the mud, and he was saved just before he died. Verse 17 and 18. You have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Jeremiah is saying, O Lord, isn't there any hope? Verse 19. Remember my affliction and roaming, the wormwood and the gale. When I remember how much I was disgraced, I feel this bitterness all the more. Verse 20. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. It means, I pity myself. So that was the introduction of the prayer. So let's go back now to verse 21. 